Hi everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to be focusing on the yellow Labrador of this pet portrait. Now let's jump straight into the tutorial because this is a very um, different pose. It was a beautiful photograph for me to work from but there were a couple of elements here where I really had to focus on the abstract shapes and that's what I want to jump into to start with. Dog paws or any element that you think, where do I start? Just focus on the shapes that you can see. And first off, I used a 2H pencil just to map in the lower section of that pad. I want to make sure that all of my sizes, the proportions, the perspective are accurate before I start any shading and put in any real layers of graphite down. Then what I'm going to start to do is use my blending stumps here with a little bit of graphite powder on to apply my very first light layer of graphite. Now I personally prefer to do this layer with graphite powder rather than using the pencils themselves and I do have a video here on YouTube showing you how you can use your graphite powder and I show the brands there that I personally have but if you don't want to go out and buy those I do show you in that video how you can make your own graphite powder. So if that's of interest I'll make sure to share that and link it at the end of this video but I will also put that in the description below as well. My next step is to then use a combination of my lighter pencils, starting off at the moment here with something like a HB and building up from there. You can see just how many times I will put a pencil down there, go do a couple of pencil strokes and it's not quite the right shade. So I need to then switch over to a different pencil. The key to this though is it must be subtle layers and I speak about this in all of my tutorials regardless of the medium that I'm working in. Graphite really is no different. Now these subtle layers really do come into their own when we start to work on the fur that's a little bit darker. Notice all these shadows that I'm starting to draw in but they're being added gradually. I haven't put down my darkest layer first. So I then decided to work on the eye. Now you'll see from all of my tutorials here on YouTube that I like to work in small sections. Now normally I always say that I start off with the eye first but because the leg here was higher up and I didn't want to work over an area that was already completed I decided to do the paw and then work on the face. When I do work on the eyes of any subject, of any medium, I always map in the outside of that shape so the darkest part of the eyelid first. The reason why I do that is I want to make sure that I get the shape of this eye accurate from that very early stage. If I work with an eye that's not the right shape and I carry on building up those layers like that it is harder to fix. Once I'm happy with the outside shape of the eye I then start working with something like a H, a HB pencil and start mapping in a very first darker layer of the iris. Now the most important thing here is if you've got a bright highlight in the eye I would always recommend to leave the white of the paper for that one highlight. Anything that's particularly bright, even highlights on the nose, I would always recommend to do that. Once you put that graphite on that paper it's harder to erase that and you'll never get it truly white like how it was before any graphite was applied. You can see here that I was using a kneaded putty eraser to remove some of that graphite to add in my subtle highlights but this eye didn't have anything that was overly bright so I didn't have to leave any of the white of the paper free. Now usually it's my preference once I put in the first eye I will then map in the fur around that eye and then work my way across to the other side of the face. I deliberately did this more so with this portrait because of the way that the dog was led down the face and the fur direction was very different to anything that I'd worked on previously. And if there is a portrait or a specific element where you potentially might feel a little bit overwhelmed, I would always advise to do this method. Break everything down into small chunks and then only focus on one section at a time. When I'm working on this here, I wasn't looking at the entire face. I have my tablet, it's about 10 inch Samsung tablet to the side of me and I'm zoomed in to that one top section of the Labrador's face, that's it. I'm not trying to look at other elements and this I do find is a much more effective and efficient way of working. Okay, so let's now jump into the tips and techniques for drawing the fur on the face. Now when I work with graphite, the way that I layer is very individual to that one portrait. I, for something like this, I don't want to go down with a really dark layer, but I don't want it to be too light either. 
My preference here is to go for more of a mid-tone with my graphite powder. You can see here that I'm now building up some of my darker values to really hype up more of that contrast. And then I'm going to be using my erasers for the subtraction technique. Now I speak about this in my other graphite tutorials, the ones that I'm going to link in this description below. And what I'm doing here is I'm just removing some of that graphite to add in the lighter fur details. By tackling this type of fur colouring in this way, I always know that I'm not going to risk going too dark and that I always know I can lighten it back up. And then I'm going to really make this look like a yellow Labrador rather than a black Labrador or a chocolate Labrador. Now, of course, that is really, really important. I don't want to end up with something that doesn't resemble that person's pet. So in terms of how light this needs to be, I have to make sure that I've got my contrast accurate. Now the contrast is something that I speak about in every single tutorial. If you don't have those shadows dark enough and the highlights aren't bright enough, the fur and the whole portrait will look flat. Now something else that can cause this is if you don't have enough layers built up, the fur will of course then also not have the same degree of depth. If you're working on a portrait and you feel like your fur is flatter, a bit more two-dimensional, the most common cause is that there is not enough layers built up. If you look at each individual section that I'm working on, there are potentially up to 10 layers for that one section of fur, sometimes more depending on that texture. So onto the nose part of this portrait, and I really did want to focus on a couple of elements here because I've approached this one slightly differently to how I would any other dog nose. If you've seen my other tutorials here on YouTube, you'll know that I always map in both nostrils first to make sure that I've got the exact placement right. That's regardless of the medium. Now, I do have a dog nose tutorial in graphite with a voiceover here on YouTube, so I'll make sure that I put that in the description below as well. Now, the reason why I've approached this one differently is I am working on one side of the nose and then I do the other side. This nose to me did not look as much like a standard nose because of how the dog's head was positioned. As you can see here from the finished portrait in the corner, it's an adorable pose, but it is led, the dog's led down on its side and the nose therefore doesn't resemble the same shape as we typically are used to. So I knew for this that I wanted to break it up into really, really small sections. I thought that if I'd placed both nostrils in as I would typically do, that it still wouldn't look right because the angle and the perspective is very, very different. It's perfect for this portrait and it's one of my favourites I've done so far, but I did feel like it could potentially get overwhelming. So this for me was my go-to approach for something like this. You can see here that I'm still following the same outline principles that I've got on my other tutorials. I'm still mapping in the lower shape of the nose. All of this is really important. But if you do find that there's going to be a specific element, and you normally get a bit of a gut feeling about that, if you do feel like it's going to be a little bit more challenging, break it up into really small sections. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. So then what I decided to do is focus on the 3D shape of the nose. Again, this principle is exactly the same with any nose that I'm working on. You can see here that I'm really curving my pencil strokes around to make sure that I'm showing the shape of this nose. This here is so important. This highlight that I'm starting to map in here is really going to determine the shape of this animal's nose. And if these highlights aren't right and it shows that the nose shape is incorrect, this is going to really draw the viewer's eye to it. It's going to be very noticeable if this isn't right. As you can see here, I'm using that same blending stamp, but this time I'm using slightly darker graphite powder. And I'm just starting to map in where the darker shadows are and where the mid-tone highlights are. Now remember, if you've got a nose and it's got a really bright highlight anywhere on that nose, try and leave the white of the paper free. Once I've then got that base layer in, only focusing on one half again, I then start going in with my graphite pencils. Something that I speak a lot in the other graphite tutorials is about graphite shine and how to avoid that happening. One of the most common areas that can happen with graphite shine is the noses because it can be one of the darker parts of the portrait. Graphite shine doesn't affect the portrait, but some artists are really bothered by it. For me, it's not something that I really worry about, but I do try and make things, you know, I make these conscious decisions throughout the layering process to avoid as much of that graphite shine as I can. One thing that will cause it is if you use your darker, softer pencils, like your 6B all the way up to a 9B, if you use those pencils early on for the very first layers and then you continuously add more pressure to those softer pencils, 
angles, you will get more of that graphite shine. So you'll notice that any part of the portrait that I'm working on, even the darker inside section of the nostrils, I didn't use my darkest graphite pencil first. I still used a mid value. And that's so important. If you don't want that graphite shine, that's one of the biggest tips I would tell anybody. Use something like a HB or a 2B and then build up from there. So while I continue with those same tips and techniques that I've just mentioned for the rest of the nose, I would just like to bring up about my Patreon channel. I currently offer in-depth tutorials in pastels and acrylics, but I am looking to add a graphite tier to it as well. I'm currently working on a batch of tutorials that are going to be uploaded to Patreon to that graphite tier so that there is content immediately available as soon as people sign up. So what I will do is I will pin a comment in the section below on this video on all of my graphite tutorials so that you can see exactly when that is live on Patreon. I do also have a Patreon library on my website which will list all of the tutorials immediately available so if the pastels and acrylic tutorials are of interest then you can see all of that content now. But I will do exactly the same process for my graphite tier. Now I'm really, really excited about offering the graphite. I cannot wait to get those slower in-depth tutorials there. But if there is any specific subjects that you might like to see featured in slower tutorials, I would love to hear any suggestions in the comments below. So as I started working on the lower part of the face, this is where the fur direction shifted from anything that I've worked on previously. So I really did just focus on that one element and the shape of whatever it was that I was working on. So for instance, the part of the muzzle next to the nose here on the lower section, I did just look at this as more of a rectangular shape. Where did my shadows fall like here currently? Where were they positioned? Then I looked at where that fur direction was traveling in. I then found that once I started filling in this larger area, it became far easier to tackle. One quick thing that I'd wanna mention about this eye, look at how at the start it looks like it's just a dark circle. I'm then using that kneaded putty eraser to subtract some of that dark graphite to show a very subtle highlight at the lower part of that iris. For this eye, that is all it required. This is one of those prime examples of don't add highlights or details where they're not visible in that photo. If you've got a good quality photo to work from and there is one area of detail that looks like it's lacking, like in this eye, it's usually for a reason. In this case, it was just because of the head positioned and being closer to the ground that it wasn't able to capture as much of that light source. Where the lip and the muzzle area is pushed up on the ground, look at how my shadows are a bit more harsher. I don't have any harsh start and stop points on the top side of the face. But with the darker shadows underneath the eye that's closest to the floor, those shadows are a bit more harsh. They don't have really rigid lines, but they are darker than any other creases anywhere else on the face. And this is really gonna help to build up the shape and the feel of this portrait. Now there was a lot going on in this portrait and every single element required a dedicated amount of time. For instance, this arm here just behind the dog's head, this is really important. The person laying behind this dog was laid down on his side, very similar to how the dog is. And it's the arm that's been stretched at the back of the dog's head. I wanna make sure that I've shown that in my portrait. It's just gonna help to give the entire portrait a really nice finish. Don't rush any element that isn't as obvious. So we wanna be putting all that effort into the face, of course we do, and the fur. But all of the elements on the edge of that portrait need to also be right. Although that arm at the back of that dog's head didn't take nowhere near as long as the face is, it was still important to give it the amount of time that that one area required. I hope the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video are useful and if you'd like to get notified of future content hit the subscribe and the bell button. I've also been posting almost every day on my YouTube community tab so if you would like to keep up to date with recent work and some tips and techniques that I share over there in written posts then don't forget to check that out each day as well. Now I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube very soon but as always if you've got any art related questions always feel free to pop them in the comments below. I am more than happy to help if I can. As always thank you so much for watching.